take this time to greet the church of god in the mighty name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen i'd like to believe that we have had a splendid sabbath day and as we bid farewell to these holy hours i would like us to begin with a word of prayer our father and our god who art in heaven we thank you for the sabbath day that which you have given to us we appreciate the gift of life that you have bestowed upon us as we are about to share the last and, mess and final message of this day heavenly father we pray dear god that since you have spoken to us during the course of the day speak to us once more heavenly father and let us carry this package that will carry us through the course of the week when all is said and done thank you dear god for hearing and answering our prayer in jesus name i do pray amen um i want to greet you once more again in the mighty name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen for our scripture reading today i would like us to read and consider the book of matthew the gospel of matthew chapter 14 matthew chapter 14 and we read verses 22 up until verses 24 matthew chapter 14 verses 22 up until verses 24 reading from the new king james version it reads immediately jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away and when he had sent the multitudes away he went up on the mountain by himself to pray now evening came he was alone there but the boat was now in the middle of the sea tossed by the waves for the wind was contrary for the wind was contrary may the lord bless the reading of his word in jesus name we pray amen now when you get to read the book of matthew chapter 14 you would get to realize that there are three particular instances that take place there the first it begins with the beheading of john the baptist secondly it moves on to christ at the mountain teaching the multitudes in essence he was teaching five thousand men and women and children besides them and including also their disciples and after that the second scene that we see is the disciples in the middle of the boat and this is where we are at at the last scene of the book of matthew chapter 14 verse yeah the book of matthew chapter 14 so this is what happens it is said that when it begins that immediately jesus made his disciples to go into the boat he made them meaning that he compelled them or he pushed them now the problem is that why would jesus want to push his disciples into entering into the boat so that they may be able to leave him behind whilst he remains behind to uh, 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 assist the multitudes in uh, to send the multitudes away so this is what happens is that jesus christ then feeds the five thousand and part of the five thousands whom he feeds are those who believed that john the baptist was the messiah and when he begins to feed the five thousand and he feeds them the people then begin to have these ideas that truly christ is the messiah of which they were not wrong about christ being the messiah but the problem is that they now wanted to push christ for political agendas so that christ might go to the roman throne and overthrow the whole roman empire so that he may be able to sit on the throne the pharisees after they were fed by christ they come to the disciples of christ and they begin to maneuver ways in which to push christ into the th into the seat of uh, 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 of emperor of israel and they wanted christ to be their king all because they saw the potential of christ being able to feed them only from five loaves and two fishes so this is what happens that is quite interesting christ then gets to see this plan that the pharisees and his disciples were beginning to devise and he decides to send 
his disciples away. And as he sends his disciples away, the disciples, they are angry and do not understand why Christ is sending them away. But Christ knew that the plan was not that when he arrives on earth, he should overthrow the government that was ruling at that particular time. And Christ, when he came on earth the first time, he came in the form of a child, in the form of a lamb, so that he might be able to fulfill the priestly duties and he might might be able to redeem humanity from the sin that they were in. Now men did not understand that and the disciples wanted to push Christ so that Christ must be so that Christ must be the emperor, so that Christ must be the king. And it is said when you read the Bible that as he was sending the multitudes away, the boat got to grow, got to go deeper and deeper within the sea. And as he was alone, left alone after having sent everyone away, he ascends the mountain and he goes to begin to pray. Now when you read Desire of Ages, it is said that as the disciples were in the boat, they were beginning to regret listening to Christ and entering into the boat. And as they were beginning to regret listening to Christ and entering into the boat, some of them were saying, now we could have been advisors of the king of Israel. We could have been advisors of the king of the world only if we had taken Christ and placed him at the top of the world's hierarchy, placing him at the kingship and making him a king. I can imagine Peter thinking that he would be the senior advisor. I can imagine Judas believing that he would have been the chief accountant or the or the minister of finance in the empire of Christ. I can imagine John the Beloved being the spokesperson or the closest person to whom Christ can confide in. And I can imagine all these other ones also having their particular and specific positions in which they would have had. But Christ knew that that was not part of the mission. Yes, the devil would have wanted Christ to have done that so that the mission might be a fail, but God knew and Christ knew that that was not part of the mission. Now, I like what C.S. Lewis would then say, a scholar by the name C.S. Lewis, he then says that religion gets to lose its beauty when it is used as a means of self rise religion loses its beauty when it is used as a means of self rise the disciples in them wanted to use the religion of christ to better themselves in the situation that was going on in Israel. They wanted to use the abilities that Christ had portrayed to them as a means of them having better positions and them being better people in the society. And as they are in the boat discussing this, the religion was losing its beauty because the ministers that God had called so that they might have a particular purpose in winning of souls, they wanted to use this particular religion that Christ had given them as a means of self rise So the Holy Spirit then comes to confuse them through the, through, through, through the, through the wind. And it is said that when you read in Tizar of Ages, the wind that tossed the boat was not the wind that was normal, but it was a wind that was sent from above so that the disciples might be distracted and so that they might think different thoughts. Because according to scholars, it is said that when the disciples were in the boat, they had said to themselves that once Christ arrives here, we are not going to ask him any questions, but we're going to push him so that he becomes the king of the Jews. He becomes the king of the entire world. We do not care whether he will listen to us or not, but when he arrives, we will push him. So there was a wind that was sent to toss the boat whilst Christ was praying. The disciples then got the wind and the wind came as a tool or as an instrument that assisted Christ 
to have his disciples being focused on the mission. And it is said that when we read the story as the wind was tossing the boat, it became even much more dangerous inside the boat and outside the boat. The waves were moving at a terrible speed and everything was difficult. They were sailors, some of them were fishermen, but they struggled to contain the boat and they felt as if they were dying. And a cry came and as a cry came, Christ was on the mountain praying for his ministry, praying for his disciples, and praying that the plan of salvation might be a success. But as he was praying, he heard the cry of his people. And when he heard the cry of his people, he then began to walk. And as we know the story, as he was walking on the sea, they thought that they were seeing a ghost. And as they thought that they were seeing a ghost, then as he as Christ was going closer, it seemed as if he was going to pass the boat until they see that it is Christ. And then Peter says to Christ, Master, if that be you, bid me to come to you and leave the boat. Then Christ did not stop Peter with his zeal. He said, then come out of the boat and follow me. And as, Christ, as Peter was walking on the water, he then saw that he was walking on water and he began to be overexcited. And in his overexcitement, he started to look behind, behind and losing focus on Christ and he began to drown. And as he was drowning, then Christ uh, uh, hears his call when he says, Master, save me for I am dying. And Christ picks up Peter from the waves and as he was drowning, he picks him up and after he picks him up, they walk and they enter into the boat. For the remainder of the trip, Peter sat behind at the boat and he was very quiet. Whilst the disciples, the other 11 disciples were amazed and they were left amazed and looking at Christ wondering what kind of a man is this who even walks on water and even the winds and the waves obey his will now why do i bring about this particular narrative to us today as we enter into as we enter into a new week it is my prayer and wish that we understand that in the religion that we are in it is not a tool that should be used as a means of self-rise that is number one number two the mission is not about us the mission is not about what we want but the mission is about us being saved from what we think is good for us if Christ had not stopped his disciples from caucusing and conversing with the Pharisees we do not know where we would be we do not know how far the plan of salvation would have went but because Christ saw it fit that we become benefactors of the plan of salvation he decided to make sure that the relationship which the disciples and the Pharisees were building gets to be separated in half because their missions were different and Christ had to channel his disciples in following the right route for the mission that which they were called for and the wind that which was sent by heaven was a wind that came at the right time whereby we were thinking thoughts that are wrong thinking thoughts that uh, 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 do not lead us to salvation may christ come and disturb us through the form of the wind and at the end of the day may we find grace may we find salvation and solace within the palms of christ so that we know that it is he who leads us and it is he who is able to control the situation around us religion loses its beauty and nowadays we have seen religion losing its beauty because of ministers who use it as a opportunity who use it as an instrument for self-rise but christ has not called us for positions christ has not called us so that we might be able to abuse and misuse his religion for our own benefits but christ has called us so that we may be able to do the work that which is expected to us after teaching his disciples for three and a half years he says to them now that i have taught you all authority has been given to me both in heaven and on earth and he begins to charge them and he says to them go out there and preach the gospel and teaching people everything that I have taught you so that they may be able to know how to observe them and if they believe if they believe baptize them 
in the way in the name of the father of the son and of the holy spirit that is the gospel that christ wanted us to preach that is the mission that which has made us to be where we are and at the end of the day let us not lose focus of the mission that god has called us to perform only by looking at things that are far away from us so it is my prayer today that as we enter into the new week if christ sees that we are disturbed from fulfilling the mission he may send a boisterous wind that will not kill us but that will be enough to disturb our minds from the things that which we want from the lusts and the things that are not good for us that we should be thinking about and planning to implement but christ through the wind that which he would have sent be able to shift and channel our focus into doing the right things which is the mission that which christ wants us to fulfill and that christ wants us to do so that he may be able to come may the lord bless us all may the lord bless the reading and narration of his word in jesus name we do pray amen let us bow our heads for a word of prayer our father and our god we thank you for the message may it be engraved into our hearts and into our minds may it not become storage that accumulates dust may it carry us through the course of the week and as it carries us heavenly father may we share it with those whom we meet along the way this is my humble prayer in jesus name i do pray amen